trumpets, blend the drums, here he comes. Hop along, Cassidy, here he Sounds like trouble. Come on. Hold it. We're heading for home, not looking for trouble. Help me! Help! Hold that kid! Much obliged. I'm Dan Morgan across the outfit. Get out that hole. Wait a minute. What's the trouble? I don't know if it's any of your business, mister, but the trouble's rustling. This kid and his Indian gang just run off a herd of lazy old beef. That is a lie, senor. Those men were not my people. Who were they then? I... I don't know. He's lying about it. We just saw him acting as lookout for them. No, no, I was on my way to town. I heard the noise and stopped to watch. I swear to you. Ah, stop your lying. Get him, Kane. Stay where you are. What's the idea? That kid is as dangerous as a rattlesnake. Then why not let the law handle him? All you have to do is swear out a warrant and the marshal will do the rest. That's fair enough, Dan. I guess you're right. You know, them ghost Indians been raiding us plenty lately. The marshal can tell you that. What do you mean by ghost Indians? Well, that's what we call them. If anybody ever gets a good look at them, they just hit and disappear back up in there somewhere. Hey, what's this thing? Oh, well, that, that's mine. <laughs> I picked it up after one of the engine raids. Well, that's a carved stone amulet. They're always dropping stuff like that. In fact, that's how we know it's them that's causing all this trouble. Well, why don't the ranchers go up and chase them out? We tried that. That's rough country up in there. Every time we do, we lose a trail. Come on, hurry up, King. Did you get that Indian kid? No, we had him, but he got away. Anyway, he didn't get close enough to you boys to find out anything. Well, that's good. Just the same. We're going into town to keep an eye open. No, don't care for the looks of that place. See, there's a fella teller. Hey, fella! Hey, where's the best place to eat around here? Oh, I don't know. I do my own cooking. Oh. Now, say, let me give you a hand. No, I don't need any help. Oh, sure you do. Well, it's kind of heavy. Oh, I'll get under it. Say, you ever make raspberry pie? Best in the West. Did you do, huh? Say, oh, you I... clumsy yak should drop that on my foot, and I think hey, you've done it hey, on purpose. Hey, what's going on? He made me drop Doc Harmon's specimen case. Doc Harmon? Yeah. Oh, well, I think I can swear it. If it was any damage done, the doctor's an old friend of mine. Oh, well, that's okay, then. Uh, where is the doctor? Oh, down the street there somewhere, checking on supplies. Now I'll help you. Oh, come on, come on. I'll be glad to see Doc Harmon again. I was on an expedition with him once. He was, yeah? What does Doc Harmon do? He's a famous archaeologist. Archie what? Archaeologist. He studies ancient ruins. You mean like, uh... Oh, no, not that kind of a ruin. <laughs> I'll bet the old fuddy duddy's a ruin himself. <laughs> Everything checking, Dr. Harmon? Thank you, Red. That's just fine. Hello, Mr. Cassidy. I'm Sue Harmon. Don't you remember me? Oh, of course. I didn't recognize you at first. I'm not a bit surprised. Nobody ever looks at an old putty duddy I'm sorry. I didn't mean hugging. Oh, she'll forgive you. Won't you, Sue? I really shouldn't. Oh, uh, Dr. Harmon, may I present my two friends? This is California Carlson and Lucky Jenkins. How do you do? Well, uh, not a bit well so far. Give him time. Give him time. <laughs> Where's your father? Dad isn't with us. He hasn't been very well. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. 
You mean you're going on this expedition without him? Well, it's quite important that this research work be completed at once. Well, I thought you could look for relics any time. Ordinarily, yes, but this trip is different. You see, it may prove Dad's pet theory that the Talmic Indians we're searching for are actually the last of the Aztecs who were driven from Mexico by Cortez. Well, I know, but couldn't you have waited? Mm -mm. We must be the first ones to bring back the proof. Oh, I see. Oh, Dr. Atwood. I want you to meet Mr. Cassie, an old friend of Dad's. How do you do? How do you do, sir? Did you know about this expedition? Why, no. We just happened to meet Miss Harmon and saw your wagon. Why do you ask? Nothing, really. You see, we're a little proud of the historical discovery we expect to make, and we don't want anyone to beat us to it. Ranching is my business, Dr. Atwood. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me. Jose! You finally got here. We were beginning to worry about you. Are you going to be the guide, Jose? Yes, senor. I take these good people to the ancient home of my tribe. Oh, so you know Jose. Senor Cassidy is my good friend. I owe him my life. Well, where is that map you promised us? It is here, doctor. Maybe it was because of Atwood's objections and attitude that I allowed Sue to persuade us to join her expedition. Anyway, next morning we were headed for Indian country. Front of Box Canyon. Good thing you got them lazy old cows up in there yesterday. Yeah, kind of a narrow squeak at that. Uh, well, they're still in East Meadow. What? I told you never to leave any stock here but our own brand. Well, I figured they'd be safe for a couple of days. So we're stuck with them. And that Indian kid's still running loose. Maybe telling Cassidy. Cassidy's with the expedition. You don't say. Right under our noses. Yeah, right where them big bad ghost Indians can pick him off. Hey, what are you doing here? My grandfather, high priest of the Talmud, sends word that you must take these people away from here. Would you go back and tell him they're not doing any harm? He says they come to plunder our ancient burial places. Oh, he's wrong about that. These people are scientists. They're searching for history, not treasure. I know. And I want my people to like the white man. But my grandfather, I'd like to talk to him. He's not far away. I will take you. Good. I'll be back as soon as I get my horse. Grandfather Gioli, this is Cassidy. I come as a friend of your people. The burial grounds of my people have been robbed many times. Why should anyone do that? It is our custom to bury our warrior's riches with him. His gold and precious ornaments, his favorite spear and dagger. There is great wealth in our high burial caves. And it'll stay there as far as this expedition is concerned. If Cassidy says it is so, you can believe him. You can depend on it. There'll be no looting by us. I pledge my life on it, Grandfather, by the sacred fire of Tlaken. Now, wait a minute, Jose. That sounds pretty grim. The oath has been given. It cannot be taken back. Come, Jose. We go in peace. <laughs> Get off my place, Atwood. I want to have a talk with you, Morgan. We ain't got nothing to talk about. Now get. I just heard a rumor that some white men were posing as Indians and stealing cattle. You hear a lot of things, but proving them something else. Oh, there's proof enough, all right. I just left Hop along Cassidy, and he's going in to see the U.S. Marshal about it in the morning. Cassidy? Why, how Move can you? on over to the herd and take care of that job we were just talking about. You too, Clem. All right, now talk. Morgan, you and your men are stealing cattle and blaming it on the Indians. Go on. Well, I hear you can hang for that. Knowing all that, why do you come over here? I want you to see that I get up to the Indian caves first and alone. I have a map given to me by that Indian boy. Oh, you want to be the first one to make those scientific discoveries, eh, Doctor? Yes, it's quite an honor. Honor? What else? This. Say, that's gold. Yeah, solid gold. If Dr. Harmon gets to the caves at the same time that I do, all the relics will go to the museum, but 
If I get there first. Yeah, it'd be a shame for all that gold to be locked up in some musty old museum, wouldn't it, eh, Doctor? What's an Indian ring? Get behind these rocks. my tent until the Indians set fire to it. I ran out and hit behind those rocks over there. Your assistant has been killed. Red killed? That settles it. Dr. Harmon, we're giving up the expedition for the time being. I refuse to let you take any more risks. What do you think, Hoppy? Oh, this hardly concerns Mr. Cassidy. You are my responsibility. We'll break camp at daylight and start back to town. I think the doctor's right, Sue, but I wouldn't worry about it. You can make another try after things settle down. I suggest we all get some rest if we can. A good idea. And I'm really grateful to you. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Good night, Hoppy. Good night, Sue. Good night. It's a shame to see all their ambition ruined like this. Yeah. You know, there's something funny going on here. What you mean, Hoppy? I saw him leave his tent before that raid started. What? So next morning found us still watching the camp. Looks like they're getting ready to pull out. I might have been wrong, but I thought Atwood was up to something. So did Sue. You mean she knew? Sure. And darn it, what is this? A guessing game or something? She knows what? I told her I'd really leave him. And I thought she was glad to get rid of me. Uh, oh, that could be. It looks like a tie up between Atwood and Morgan. Bosom buddies. Somebody leaving. There's the signal. Yes. You guessed right. Morgan and Dr. Atwood just left together to go to the Indian caves. Morgan raided this camp last night to get that herd through. He might have figured to get rid of us, too, or at least stop us. But why is Dr. Atwood doing this? He's a scientist. I'm afraid he's fallen for the temptation of getting rich. Now remember, he can get to those caves much quicker through Morgan's property. Maybe there's more solid gold up there, like the handle of this knife. This is horrible. My father's reputation is at stake. What's our next move, Hoppy? I don't know, but I promised Jose there wouldn't be any looting. And there's not going to be. Morgan's going to be dangerous to stop. Oh, uh, we can handle that another way. You stay here with Sue until California and I get back. Right, Hoppy. Just how are we going to handle this? First of all, we got to find Jose. We're supposed to find the cave around here somewhere. What's the matter? Ain't that map right? Let me see it. Who's that over there? It's that Indian kid. He'll know the right trail. Go get him. Hey, you! Come back here! There they are. wonder what they shot at. Maybe the uh, Rattler rizzed up and said, Hi, you brother Morgan. <laughs> that was stupid, Morgan. 
I ain't running this. Come on, let's go and look further. I wish we could have found Jose before they got this far up. has broken his oath. He has come to rob us. There was some mistake. I should not have listened to your friend Cassidy. What has befallen my brother? The white man Cassidy is coming to rob us. Cassidy? Cassidy is good. He will help us. Have no fear. I give my oath by the sacred fire of Tlaken. He knows not what he is saying. The oath has been given. Only by the sacrifice of fire can he fulfill it. But it is the man Cassidy who should pay for this treachery. You are right, Tulu. I will go and bring this Cassidy here if it be the will of the gods. up and they're still taking it easy. Kane's joined them now. They'll be starting up. You keep your eyes on them. I'm going to look for Jose. If they get too close, give me three owl hoots, will you? What kind of owl, Hoppy? Stuff. Violi! You are my prisoner, Cassidy. Up. I'm your friend. I came to help your people. Again, you lie. Now kill me like you tried to kill my grandson, Jose. Jose? Well, that's the shot I heard. Finish your work, deceitful man. Here's your knife. You don't believe me. White men are on their way up here. You must keep your people out of sight. Up here. Up here, I pointed my head off and you didn't answer. Well, you didn't hoot loud enough. What's going on? They're all headed for a cave down there. Yeah? There they are, Hoppy. Sewer coming up. They'll run right into Morgan's men. Silly, you. Where'd he go? Oh, I don't know. Never mind him now. I'm going down to see if I can stop Lucky and Sue. Stay here and keep your eyes open. I wish you hadn't started up here. There's going to be trouble. Well, we had to bring you this. A warrant for Morgan's arrest for holding up an expedition and murder. The marshal made Lucky a deputy. Now all he has to do is serve it. Well, he's down below, but he's got some men with him. That'll have to wait until we get you back where you belong. Come with me. What of Cassidy? We met and I was disgraced. If Cassidy spoke the truth, the great god Talakin would have decreed that I was to be the victor in our meeting. But, Grandfather, the great god Talakin will protect us. No, I have failed. And because of it, I will be the sacrifice to the fire pit. You won't have to. I will bring this Cassidy to us at the hour of sacrifice. I swear it. Get him up. Oh. Come back to the United, huh? No. Forgive me. Forgive me? I know who you are. You do, huh? The strong man, Cassidy. Well, yeah, I might be, and then again, I might, but uh, who might you be? A messenger sent to show you the treasure caves of my people, where you may become rich. Yeah? Come, I will lead you. Well, now, doggone it, I ought to stay here, because I've got to keep a lookout. And I... It is very close, and will take a short time. Come, great warrior. 
Well. He is not Cassidy, this weak old man. Weak old man? No, wait a minute. I'll, I'll wrestle you in. This one is acceptable I'll... to Tulakan. Get him ready. Get me ready. No, wait a minute. Get me ready. No, wait. No, wait. My project long as ever. Where is he? Oh, I don't know. I left him right here. And he left here with an Indian. You said he only blamed you for shooting Jose? Yes, and that means we got to find him and quick. You think they might try and take down in California? That's just what I mean. I had to trust the luck that Atwood and Morgan and his men wouldn't be able to follow our footprints. There's your man. Go get him.
They're not far from Coltsville. Maybe we can find some shelter there. Shelter? What do you mean, Hoppy? Well, look at that storm ahead of us. Looks like a good place for us to stop. But that's a church. Well, what about it? It's not a bad place to spend a little time once in a while. Well, let's get the food and blankets off. We'll go inside and eat and bed down for the night. gives me the creeps. What was that? Oh, probably just a shutter banging in the wind. Kind of drafty in here. Let's see what's in here. Oh, this looks better. Smells kind of musty. Oh, this will do fine, California. And so will a little food. Coming right up, puppy. I'm sure glad we decided to stop here. It's so nice and quiet. Not a thing to disturb a good night's sleep. I ain't so sure of that. I get a feeling my bones are mighty disturbing. Oh, that's just a rheumatism. When I put my head on those saddlebags, not even the prettiest gal in the world could make me open my eyes. <laughs> As a gambling man, I wouldn't make any bets on that, would you? <laughs> me neither. Don't take the coffee. No. Uh, I'm gonna get this beautiful bed fixed right now. Going on. We hadn't been asleep a half an hour. We are awakened by the music of an organ. did startle me. There's seldom anyone here. Well, that's what we thought, so we came in here to spend the night out of the storm. I'm Hopalong Cassidy, and these are my two friends, California Carlson and Lucky Jenkins. Glad to know you, ma'am. Me too. I was thinking maybe it might be some angel out here playing. And you were pretty nearly right. I'm Susan Crowell, and this is my mother. How do you do? Susan's father was the pastor here, and he's buried in the churchyard. We come here each morning and evening to give simple prayer. I understand, Mrs. Crown. I'm sorry we were here to interrupt you. Did you say you and your daughter lived near here? Yes. Well, I thought this place was deserted. It is, with the exception of Deacon Black and ourselves. Deacon Black? Oh, well, Mr. Black's not a real deacon. We just call him that because, well, he's a fine man who helped Father with his work at church. When Father was killed, Mr. Black just decided to stay on, helping any way he could. I see. Tell me, Mrs. Crowell, what happened to the people here? Why did they abandon their homes? Why? I, I don't like to talk about it. Bad luck has always come to those who have. Well, I'll talk about it. All began about four months ago. It was a nice enough little town then, and all of a sudden a shadow fell over it. What do you mean, Miss Crowell? Well, people were afraid because there were shootings and strange disappearances. It got so no one knew who would be next, and... They either kept their doors locked or started moving away. Well, there must have been someone they suspected. No, not a soul. That was the awful part of it. My own father was one of those who killed without warning. But we didn't move away like all the others. Well, I've seen a lot of trouble, but never without reason like this. I've had the same feeling ever since we've been here. This place ain't healthy for man or beast. And if we just had a little more time, we'd stay around and see what makes it so unhealthy. Oh, no, no, you mustn't do that. It's bound to cause more trouble. 
We ask only for peace and the privilege of coming to this little church. Oh, don't worry, Mrs. Crow. We have to leave the first thing in the morning, and you can be sure that we all hope you have nothing but peace. Oh, thank you. Come, Susan. We'd better go now. It's a pretty bad night. I'll get my poncho and go with you. Well, if you wish. Good night. Good night. Good night. Sort of wish I was going, too. the end of the world, but it could have been the end of Miss Susan. What do you mean? Well, if she'd been sitting at that organ, she'd have been killed when that thing came down. Oh, what a narrow escape. See that they get home safely, Lucky. I will. By golly, Hoppy, that could have been a terrible accident. Got it wrong, California. It'd have been murder. But, but murder? Sure, that beam wasn't right at the crack. It's been sawed almost in two, and it was done very recently. Then whoever done it? Wanted to kill that girl because she's the only one that ever sits there. I'll split them like a rack of spare ribs. I'll tear them limb from limb. Or, say, how did he know that someone would be sitting there when that thing fell? I don't know. He, he must have figured on the vibration of that organ to break this thing loose. But in this case, that clap of thunder did it. Fortunately, she wasn't sitting there. I'd like to get to the bottom of this thing. A deserted town, a lot of killings, and nobody around but two women and a deacon. You know something, Hoppy? There's somebody else around here. You know something else? Sometimes your deductions are phenomenal. I'm a pretty smart fella. Whoever was at the bottom of the whole mystery must still be in the neighborhood. I looked around trying to find some clue. Morning might bring some answers. And morning did. It sounded like the whole place was falling apart. starting on that wall. What's going to hold the roof up? You said we was going to tear the joint down, didn't you? Sure, but you start from the top, not the bottom, generally. All right, get up on that roof. Hello, boys. Who are you? My name's Cassidy. I don't think I got yours. Riker, what are you doing here? Well, it was storming last night, if you remember, and we came in here for shelter. I see the sun shining out now. Must be a nice day outside. It is. So why don't you and your boys get out there and enjoy it while you can? Listen, mister, my friends and I have been enjoying good health for a long time. We expect to keep right on doing it. Now, what's your business here? Well, I'll tell you. It's a good thing you were here last night. How's that? Because this church ain't going to be here tonight. We're tearing it down. Mr. Cassidy. Did, did I hear right when this man said he was going to tear our church down? You heard right, miss. Since when has it been your church? I think the young lady means that she and her mother come here to worship. And the church belongs to whoever uses it. Look, Hoppy, why are you arguing with this man? Let's throw him out of here and not worry Miss Susan anymore. Son, you got more nerve than you got brains. You're in a place where they used to give them burial services. And that's what you're going to get if you don't shut up. I think we've done enough arguing. Now, unless you've got the legal right to tear this place down, you're not touching a stick of it. You ain't the law around here. I got as much right to tear it down as you've got to sleep in it. And I got the men to back me up. Now get this straight. You're getting out and I'm staying here. Gentlemen. Oh, Mr. Black. I'm so glad you've come. There's trouble here. Yes, I gather that from the doorway. Have patience and faith, child. I'll do what I can. I don't know you men, but you've chosen a place of peace to make trouble. May I ask what the difficulty is? Mr. Deacon, I'd like to baptize that critter with a little hot lead. That's enough, California. Mr. Black, Miss Susan has told us about you, and we're glad you came. Well, in that case, I think you should put your gun away. Mr. Black, I can't understand why anyone would want to tear this church down without reason. Tear it down? Well, are you thinking of doing such a thing? No, I am. And you and all your gospel can't stop me. Who owns this church? Well, I, I don't know. Since Coltsville has become a deserted town, it'd be hard to say. I've stayed on here with the hope that 
Someday we'd have a congregation of good people back on these benches. See it go now, chatter what little we have left. May I ask why you want to destroy this building? Sure, I found out that nobody owned the place and we need finished lumber. I'm building a mining camp a little way up the trail. Who ever heard of such a thing? Somebody has got to stop him. We'll do what we can, won't we, Hoppy? Well, I, I think that's up to Mr. Black. Well, when are you leaving? I got work to do. As soon as I'm sure you're a lot of miles from here, you're not tearing this building down so long as these people want it to stand. So that's it. You're staying. That's right. All right. But I'll be seeing you soon again. It's a big country. That's what I've heard. If you live long enough to get around to seeing it. All right. Come on. Well, we might as well get out of here. Hoppy, if you don't mind, I'd, uh, I'd like to stay on for a while. Those men might come back if they think we've all gone and, well, at least they won't have their own way of it. All right, Lucky, and if anything comes up, you can get word to me at the ranch. As long as one of your men's staying, I'll be leaving too. Goodbye, friend. Goodbye, sir. And bless you, Susan. Goodbye, Mr. Cassidy. Goodbye, Susan. California, will you get our horses? Lucky, come and help me with the gear. Oh, ma'am. Glad to meet you. I'm glad to believe him. <laughs> you all right, California? You sure you're all right? I don't know, Hoppy. How do I look? Oh, they didn't get you. They must have been waiting for us to come out. What if they got Mr. Black? I don't know. I'll find out. You better get the back. See Mr. Black? No, but I see plenty of others. Looks like they're surrounding the place. Doesn't make sense. First they want us to leave, now they're shooting so we can't get out. Makes sense if we meet up with one of them bullets. Then you're out for good. Certain so long as they keep us in, we can keep them out. Lucky, you go back with the women and watch those windows. We'll take care of this up here. Yeah, bench, yeah. Where do you want? Right over here. Right? Take your mother over by the organ. Lucky, listen, I don't know what to Susan, do. Susan, get down. I'm worried enough about you already. Why, what do you mean? Well, maybe I shouldn't tell you, but last night someone tried to kill you. Kill me? I don't understand. Hoppy says that that beam was deliberately sawed so that it would snap at the least vibration and fall on the organ bench where you were sitting.
search for the law led me to the office of the county clerk. Hey, clerk! I'd been promised help. I had learned a mighty important thing about the church property. Who is it? Deacon. Good evening. Good evening. How'd you get here all in one piece? Well, I went to the camp of those men and demanded that they let me through their lines. It's my daily habit to visit here, and no one shall stop me. Mighty brave of you. Oh, Mr. Black. Mr. Black. Good evening, child. I'm so glad you're here. I wish you'd talk to Mother. She needs your help. Of course, Susan. I'll be glad to. I met you yesterday. Little country church is as wonderful as a great cathedral, because it stands for the same things. Like marriage? Yes. My mother and father were married here. Perhaps I should be too. You know, this is the place I'd like to be married. I've always heard that you kissed the bride after the ceremony. A fine army I have. One has his eyes wide open with love, and the other has his eyes closed with sleep. Hey. Hey, there, there. How are you, Hoppy? I was just closing my eyes to make believe you was here. Sure. Ain't a thing happened since you left. Except one shot that I know of. Yeah? But that one didn't do any harm. This is a pleasant surprise. I saw you were missing when I arrived tonight, but I made no inquiry because I thought you'd been well, seeing you here is just as much of a surprise. How did you make it? As I told him, I went to the camp of those men and demanded that they let me through. Then they asked me to bring you a message. Well, the only message I want from them is that they'll clear out of here. You mean we have a chance? We can get out? Well, that's possible. I've learned a few things that might save the church and a lot of killings. I went to the county clerk in Fenwell, and among other things, I found that this church belongs to the town of Coltsville. It can't be bought and it can't be sold so long as it stands. To be honest, I don't know why anyone wants the place. Staying here proves nothing but that death is convenient to a church graveyard. Do you think you can get back to those men safely? Why, yes. Tell them that we're leaving this morning, but we're coming back. That you don't tell them. I don't want you to be too confident that I have enough information to get to the bottom of this. I still don't know what it's all about, but I've got a hunch who's behind it. Well, may I ask what you know? Uh, it's very little. And what I do know is all based on suspicion. But sometimes that can be as strong as the rope around a man's neck. My friend, gratitude has no depths. All I can say is, I'll deliver your message, and I appreciate from the bottom of my heart what you've told me. Good night. Good night, sir. Mr. Black, you're leaving. Please take me with you. You'd better stay here with Mr. Cassidy, my dear. Susan, take care of your mother. Oh, but please, Mrs. Crowell. Now, get this straight. This is going to be the payoff. When we go in there, I want each one of you to make your bullets count. We're going to rush the place, and we're not coming out till it's cleaned up. What about the women? Ain't your fault if they get in the way. I don't like it. You'll do what you're told. I'm giving the orders around here. What did you just say, Riker? Oh, nothing, nothing, boss. I didn't know you were back. I was just telling the boys what we were going to do. You're going to do nothing until I tell you to. Remember? 
No further shooting. what he's up to. This place is getting busier than a barn at a cattle auction. California, let him in. We let him. Come on, open the door. I sure hope you're an enemy, because I hate to kill a friend. something to tell you. Well, go on. Uh, uh. Put him on that bench and do what you can for him. Get his feet. for a man who had found oil but didn't know how to get it out. That was going to be my job. That's why he killed or scared everyone until they left town so he could take over. How did you know all this? I accidentally ran across a Bible up there that had a name inscribed in it. And through that, I found out who was buying all this property. It was a woman. <laughs> I knew it all the time. Oh, no, it wasn't your mother, Susan. It was a woman by the name of Mary Brewster. That's the name I found in the Bible. She was his sister. Poppy, we forgot about the others. No, I didn't, and neither did Tom, the county clerk. Look out there. Well, we better get her here together. California, get him bandaged up. Here. Oh, Mrs. Crowell, I'm, I'm sorry this has been such a trying ordeal. But at least you have your church. Thank you. You'll find a couple of them in the church. Better take care of them, too. Thanks for everything, pal. <laughs> it's all right, Hoppy. It's a sure a nice way to start out a day, you know, holding up a lot of gophers. Say, they're an ugly-looking bunch, ain't they? Uh, what are they after, Hoppy? Oh, well, ground under the old church is full of it. Well, you might as well take them in, Tom. Maybe they can find some oil under the old jailhouse. <laughs> we'll sure give them a lot of time to try it. Well, now that the shooting's over, I suppose you'll be heading for home, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Here he comes, here he comes, and the trumpets and the drums, here he comes. Hot 
So solemn, sure looks good, doesn't it? Yeah, it just glides along. Makes you wish you were sitting in one of them nice cushioned seats, don't it? <laughs> I knew California couldn't stand a long trip like this. What you talking about? I'm fresh as a daisy. I was just thinking of wore out you as well. Ah, uh, never mind. We'll be in Wheeler in a few minutes, and you can both relax. Say, Hoppy, this fellow, Tom Smith, that uh, wrote for you to come to Wheeler, did you say he was a railroad man? Uh, he's only the vice president of the line. Vice president? Hmm? Maybe let me run one of them engines, huh? Maybe. <laughs> Better go after him. He's liable to get lost. I'll ride on in and see Tom. I told him I'd be in today. It seems like it was something in the water. My wife's pretty sick. Well, let's see what we can do for her. Lee, where were you? Well, I stopped this gentleman on the road, and he was nice enough to see if he could help us. Oh, I hope so. I feel so sick. I could die. No, you're not going to die, Mrs. Uh, Harvey. It's just a case of local wheat poisoning. Local wheat? Then it, it isn't it isn't deadly? No, but it is mean stuff and can make you awfully sick. I think I can give her something to make her feel better, though. Do you have some hot water without the local wheat and some baking soda? Yeah, right here. Wait a minute. The railroad has a company hospital, hasn't it? Yes. You better ride over and see what they suggest in case this doesn't work. Why, I can't. My horse is sick. Well, you can take mine. But don't ride him too hard. He's had a big day. I'll watch it. I'll rush right back, honey. You should have seen yourself when I pulled up alongside of you. Hanging on like this. It's my fault he don't like trains. Hey, look. Topper. Where's Hoffy? Hey, you! Where's Hoffy? What are you doing with his horse? Come on, talk fast, mister. What's the matter? You all right, Hoppy? What you doing here? Well, these people are having a little trouble with local weed poisoning. Yeah? Anybody'd have a tough time trying to steal your horse. Well, you won't need him now, anyhow. Mrs. Garvin's feeling much better. Why? I'm really grateful to you. I wish you'd stay to supper with us. No, thanks. We're supposed to be in town by now. Hoppy, home cooking. He didn't invite you. Now, you're all welcome. Be glad to have you. All right, we'll stay. Want another piece? Uh. <laughs> Young man, anytime you want to quit railroading, I'll bet Hoppy will give me a job cooking for the Bar 20. I certainly would. The spot I'm in, I might as well quit and accept the offer. Please, Lee. All right, I'm doing great. Well, you are. He's the best brakeman on the line. And someday he'll have a chance to advance. Oh, why shouldn't he? I'll tell you why. Because a big shot called Tom Smith will see to it that I give up. 
Well, why should he do that? For the same reason he had one of his flunkies put loco weed in our well. No, Lee, you're wrong. No matter how Dad feels about our marriage, he'd never do anything to hurt us. Dad? You mean this Tom Smith here, Pa? Yeah, the vice president's daughter ran off with a common brakeman. And what's the matter with that? Oh, Dad's awfully set and stubborn. But it just won't do him any good. Lee's going to stay on the job and show him. And I'd say with your help, he had a good chance of doing it, too. Now, oh, come on, boys. We better get into town. Will you excuse us? Leave that pie there. Thank you, Mr. Kennedy. Doggone. Ain't she a beauty? Yeah, but don't get too close to her. She might bite. <laughs> I hope the secretary is pretty. You'll have to find out later. You're waiting out here. Don't try to tell me how to treat my own daughter. Shut up and take a letter. Fine way to talk to a girl. My dear Jesse, I'm giving you the one last chance to come back to your home. Hey, Tom. Tom Smith. Now, who and what in the... Oh, it's you, Hoppy. How oh, are you? I've been expecting you. We'll finish that last letter tomorrow. Type out the reports to one number seven. Right, Chief. Oh, Hoppy, this is Harmon Roberts, my secretary. Harmon, this is Hopalong Cassidy, one of my oldest friends. How are you? This is Lucky Jenkins. How do you do? See you both around later, I hope. Come on in, Hubby. You mean he's the secretary? That's life on the railroad, Lucky. And there's been a series of accidents lately. And it seems they've all been directed at me. Well, I still don't see what that's got to do with your son-in-law. I know it's a terrible thing to have to say, Hubby. But whenever those accidents happen, he was always somewhere close by. He didn't seem like that kind of a boy to me. Besides, why should he want to hurt you? Because I'm a rich man. And he knows Jesse will get it all when I die. Oh, I hope you're wrong. And how did you get so rich? I didn't know there was a lot of money in railroading. Well, there isn't actually, but I bought a piece of land last year. Land around here? No, 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 no. It's in Oklahoma. And it turned out to be in the middle of a new oil field. Oh, I see. And I suppose you told Jesse all about it. No, not a word. I never told anybody. Well, then I only have one suggestion I can make. What's that? You put three new men to work here. Thanks, Hoppy. I knew I could depend on you to help me. Where do you think I'll fit in best? Now, if you take this job as storekeeper, you'll be at a spot where you'll come in contact with a lot of grapevine gossip. Mm -hmm. Hi, Garvin. I hear you're on on number eight. Yeah, I finally got a call. Hello, Lee. How's Jesse? Fine. Now she's over that local weed poisoning. Glad she's all right. I was lucky some cowmen happened along. There's one of them now, California Carson. What's he doing in the yards? He, Cassidy, and Jenkins. They're all working out here now. Working for the road? Those greenhorns? Why, certainly. They're friends of Smith's. That right, Roberts? I believe so. All the time they were at my house, they never even mentioned they knew him. <laughs> Maybe they had a reason to keep it quiet. What do you mean by that? Who does he think they are? He's just trying to get you riled up. Don't pay any attention. Yeah? Maybe he knows what he's talking about. Smith brought them here to check up on me so he could fire me if I made any slips. That's it, isn't it? I don't know, Lee. The old man hasn't said anything about it to me. No, he wouldn't, knowing you're a friend of mine. But he's not putting anything over on me because I won't stand for it. Wait a minute, Lee. Oh, hiya, Lee. I've been wondering when we'd see you. Oh, you have. Well, you and your pals can stop for them because I'm right here and you can mind your own business. What are you talking about? This. I don't know what this is about, if that's how you feel about it. Wait a minute. What's this about? 
I don't know. It just waded into me. I'll tell you, Cassidy, I don't like being spied on. What have you got to be afraid of? Nothing. Then you have nothing to worry about, have you? Did I see a couple going on here? A couple of boys skylarking boss is no trouble. Just a rough house. There's been too much lack of discipline around here lately, Banks. Send your men back to work. Right. Back to work, man. Come on. Oh, your free ride's over. <laughs> Nothing funny about it. Well, that ain't my old pal number 3865. Wherever he's going, that hobo's due to walk the rest of the way. Ben Watts, when'd you get out? About a month after you did. Warden got tired of looking at my face. How'd you happen on this desert road? Just plain accident. And good luck. Never figured I'd run into an old cellmate. Crawl under again as soon as we get moving out. I'll get your board through car out of here. The main line's a few miles north. Don't bother me, boy. You know, uh, I'm sick of traveling. I uh, think I'll take it easy with you a while. But you can't. I'm married. And nobody around here knows I've done time. Well, no one should know. As long as you and I get along. What do you mean? Well, suppose you meet me in town, we'll talk it over. I don't want to drink. Oh, come on. I said I don't want to drink. I'm going home. Oh, just one drink and we'll both go home. To your house. There's your friend Garvin, but who's that hobo with him? Hobo is right. That's a rough-looking customer. Look, man, why don't you act like a human being and let me alone? There's a freight out at 10 o'clock. Just one little drink and maybe I'll let you persuade me to go. We'll see. Come on. I think I'll have a talk with that hobo a little later. He's sober enough to talk. Oh, Hoppy. I'm so worried. Lee didn't come home to supper tonight. Oh, well, time doesn't mean anything to a railroader. They just stay until the job is finished. I suppose I am silly to worry, but I... Maybe you're not. Well, what do you mean? Jesse, before you and Lee were married, were you engaged to someone else? Someone that might be causing trouble? Why, no, I was never engaged to anybody but Lee. Not to Harmon Roberts? Certainly not. Harmon was a good friend of mine. He likes Lee a lot, too. I thought I told you to keep out of my business. Lee Hoppy's trying to help. Yeah, he brought you here to check on me. But he didn't. You're wrong about that, Garvin. Oh, no, I'm not. That's what Tom Smith hired you for, spy work. Lee, that's not being very fair to Dad. That's right. Stand up for your father. I'm always wrong. Well, you are this time. Then why do you bother with me? Why don't you go back to your father and everybody will be happy? He didn't mean that. And he'll be sorry as soon as he cools off. I don't think so, Harvey. I am going to Dad. Jesse, I think you're making a mistake. But if that's what you want to do, do you mind if I go with you? No. Where's Garvin? He's waiting for you. Come on. There's a little drink for you. Oh, Garvin, where are you? Yeah, have a little drink. You get right along. He better be if he knows what's good for him. There you are. Where did you know Garvin before? And they go, I ain't talking cops. He's gone. We never get anything out of him tonight. I think he'll be glad to talk all we want him to in the morning. Misunderstanding. My mind's made up, Hoppy. I'm taking her east to forget this whole unpleasant episode. All right, Tom.
What happened? He's been shot. No, 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 no. Don't, don't get excited. It just raised my scalp, is all. Who did it, Chief? Did you see him? No, I didn't have to see him. I can guess who it was. Oh, no, Dad. Well, surely you don't mean Lee. Go get Marshal Reardon. Get Marshal Reardon. Yes, sir. Somebody, help! Help! What's the matter, Robert? Somebody took a shot at the chief through that window. You hurt bad? Just a scalp wound, luckily. I'm going after Marshal Reardon. What's this on the ground? Looks like whoever took a shot at the boss dropped his scarf. I've seen that somewhere before tonight. I recognize those big polka dots. Why, that's the scarf for sale. Wait a minute. Listen. They come to think of it, I saw that on a hobo's neck tonight. Hobo, that's it. I saw him too, in front of the saloon. He was talking loud. A kind of a tough-looking character. Well, that must be our man. Let's get after him. But where? When you saw him, Robert, who was he talking about? Uh, it was Lee Garvin. Oh, Garvin? Say, didn't he have a row with Smith today? I guess he did, but what's that guy? Look, let's get this over to the marshal right away, Roberts. And don't forget to tell him about Garvin talking to this hobo. Oh, but... If you don't do it, Roberts, I will. I ain't shooting any killer. Come on. All right, I'll go. Well, that's a fine piece of teamwork. Huh? Let's go talk to Lee and get the straight of this. I felt sure that the teamwork we had seen meant a frame-up. I went to find Lee and tell him to lay low until I got to the bottom of it. My next move was to try to find Potts, the hobo. Trust me, saw him. Watch talks now, we're in trouble. Cassidy may need help. Take it easy, I'm not gonna bother you. Well, I never shot anybody. That gun wasn't mine. They're lying. Who's lying? Well, them two railroaders that to lock me up in the shack. Who were they? Well, one of them was... <laughs> Try to answer me. Was one of them Roberts? Are you all right, Cassidy? Thanks. We found the hobo. Now I had to tell Lee that he must see Tom Smith and make a clean breast of everything. And Lee took my advice. Come in. Hello, Mr. Smith. So, you decided to come here after all, eh? Yes, I... I want to tell you something about that. Well, suppose you start by telling me why you sent your old cellmate Watts here last night to shoot me. But I didn't. That's a cooked up story. And so is the one about your jail term, I suppose. Well, that part of it's true. But I had... Save your breath. Here. What's that? The money you came here to hold me up for. Take it and get out. And if I ever hear of you coming near my daughter... Wait again, a minute. I don't want your money, and I had nothing to do with the shooting. I'll take a dying man's word for it. You mean Ben Watts? Yes. He confessed the whole thing before he died. He told them all about it. He told who? Well, he told... Why did you do that? He was reaching for a gun, wasn't he? No, he wasn't. My mistake, Chief. Sorry. Well, I should think so. I told you I didn't need any help with him. I had my own gun handy here. And another thing, Roberts. The boy was telling me... All about me? What are you doing? Turn that gun away. Are you insane? Not at all, Chief. You see, it all works out nicely. He threatened you. You drew this gun, he grabbed it, and killed her. Help! Help! What happened? 
Garvin shot the chief. What is it? Dad! Garvin pulled the trigger just as I came in behind him. I was too late to stop him, but I knocked him out with... Where's Garvin? Well, there was nobody here but Tom and Jesse when I came in. But look, here's the club I knocked the killer out with. He must be around somewhere. Look for him. But be careful, he'll shoot on sight. Right. You said it was Lee? It was. Oh, no. He must be wrong, Hoppy. How could I be? But Lee would never hurt Father, would he? I'm sure he didn't, Jesse. But there's no way I can prove it now. <laughs> I never believed for a moment that Lee had shot Tom Smith. So now I had to find Lee again, and keep him under my wing until the whole thing was straightened out. There was no sight of Lee around the place. What is it? Robertson Bank just had a big row. Had a big row, what about? Something about money in the special train that Roberts ordered for him and Miss Jessie. Well, that's funny. She didn't say anything about him going east with her tonight. Oh, not tonight. Right now, as soon as she gets back to town with her clothes and things. Maybe it's just as well we didn't find Lee. I'd hate to give him that news. Well, nevertheless, we're going to find him. He left a note for Jesse on this card off a car consigned to the Dolomite Mine. Well, that's my writing. I nailed it on the car yesterday. Wasn't well, that the one they want to drop to the siding near the old mill? Yeah, they're going to bring mules down and haul the stuff up later. Well, that means that Lee's probably hiding out there. That old train's just about to start. Maybe if we head off across the desert, we can get to Lee before it's too late. Yeah, I got an idea that might work. Hoppy, I've got to tell you. Yeah? Robert's just taking along the marshal and the deputy for bodyguard. Well, never mind that now. Come on. We'd found Lee. And as the train neared the old mill... California, get down and throw that switch. But wait until you're sure the engineer can't stop outside. All right, but I don't like it. That's a holder. I don't like it any better than you do, but it's the only chance we got. Go on. Should stop about here. Him for us, Cassidy. I'm very much obliged. What a dirty double crossing deal. That's enough out of you, Garvin. Handcuff this killer, Marshal. Just a minute, Marshal. Here's the man the handcuffs belong on. Are you insane? What's this all about, Cassidy? I thought Garvin was the man we were after. I want you to arrest Roberts for forgery and the murder of Tom Smith. Tom Smith? Oh, now wait a minute. Thanks has just turned to state's evidence. Here's his confession. Lies. Everybody knows that Garvin shot him. I don't know. This sounds pretty convincing. He says that you killed Tom to get a hold of those oil land deeds. You forged the bill of sale on the railroad stock and forced him to help you. That dirty rat. He can't get clear by putting everything on me. He got his share of it. I can prove it. Yeah, you'll get your chance at the trial. Take him away, Clem. Are you using thanks, Cassidy? And you too, Lee. I guess I've been barking up the wrong tree. I'm sure sorry. I, I can't blame anybody. Wait a minute, Lee. Jesse never did believe it. I'd better take that confession of Banks. Not that we'll be needing it legally. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Take a look at it. Why, this is only a bill of sale for some bar 20 cattle. <laughs> <laughs> Cassidy, you sure are an A number one bluffer. Put her there. <laughs> well, it worked anyhow. <laughs> I suppose you'll be starting back to break it. Well, I, I hope I will. No, indeed, he's fine. Well, I guess I had it coming. 
He's going to be too busy being vice president of our railroad. <laughs> now that you got it back for us, in spite of ourselves. Ah, uh, good luck to both of you. Thank you. I wish you'd stay on. No, we've been away from the ranch too long as it is. Goodbye. 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 Bye, Bye. on, fellas. Bye. Cattle you got there, Hoppy? Well, I don't like to brag, but there's nothing on four feet that's any better. <laughs> How long are you going to be around? Not long. Why? Suppose we have a little talk about that. Who's that talking to Lucky? I don't know. Uh, well, I know his face, but I uh, just don't place him. Well, that's Speed Blaney, fast shooting and fast talking. You know, Hoppy, when you say those cattle are the best things on four feet, I'd say he's one of the worst things on two. Well, that's a strange companion for Lucky. I don't mean nothing, Hoppy. The sooner he gets to know Blaney's kind, the sooner he'll stay away from him. Yeah, but by the same token, you know, fire's hot without putting your finger in it to find out. I've been worried about him on this trip. Maybe you better go tell him we're ready to leave for home. Sure. Oh, Hoppy, before you go, will you sign this? Sure. Well, that's all. Just remember what I said. I'll remember. Hey, Rocky. Hey, Rocky! That's a lot of money to tie to a horse, Hoppy. <laughs> I'd rather trust the horse with it than most men I know. <laughs> Well, I guess the Cattle Association feels the same way, otherwise you wouldn't be handling it. Oh, well, it is a responsibility, Jake, but somebody has to do it. Yeah. Well, so long, Hoppy, and good luck. So long. So long, California. So long, Jay. What's the matter? Well, I guess we got to stay here a while. What do you mean? Lucky, just rode off. Didn't you tell him we were ready? Long for a time. Uh, ain't often we get to town, Hoppy. Maybe he wanted to see somebody or... Uh... So do I. You do? Who? Oh, lucky. And I guess we'll do as you say. We'll just stand here and wait. What time is it? Uh... You should have been miles up the trail by now, Lucky. Didn't know you were ready to leave. Well, you might have taken the trouble to find out. I had an errand to do. Couldn't have had anything to do with Steve Blaney, could it? Blaney? Why? I saw you talking to him. Look, Hoppy, you've been picking on me ever since we left the ranch. Picking on you? You sound like a little boy. You're beginning to act like one. You go to sleep on the trail, you complain about the dust while you're riding herd, and then you disappear and hold us up for two hours. What's gotten into you, Lucky? Nothing, but I can look for another job. I think you need a rest, not another job, and as soon as we get home, I'll see that you got a few days off. Well, it's too late to ride through tonight. We'll stop at Boulder Inn. Doc Richards sure cure Indian remedies. Maybe he's got something from a rheumatiz. Well, if he has, don't rub it. The last you had exploded. Yeah. Ah. Hey, would you take care of our horses for us, please? Hello. Good evening. Sure is. Want to sleep no? Yeah, for three. Well, come right this way. Sign your name in the book there, and I'll get your key. There you be. Want any food? No, we ate on the trail. Most people do that come here. Well, there's probably a good reason for it. You'll find that room at the head of the stairs. Thanks. Well, I'm going to hit the pillow. What about you two? I feel kind of petered out myself, Hoppy. I'll wait and see the dock in the morning. Sure. Well, I think I'll stick around down here for a while. I'm not sleepy. All right, Lucky. And maybe staying up for a little while get you in a better humor, huh?
Thanks. That's all right. Look. Three aces of clubs. Mm-hmm. Well, I've seen packs of cards in hotel lobbies where there were four aces of the same kind. And, my dear young man, you were wrong about the suit. Because, as you can readily see, these are the aces of hearts. <laughs> I must be getting dizzy. I'd swear that... <laughs> Don't. A lot of people have sworn at my uncle's card tricks. And then felt very silly afterwards. And now there's a woman for you. They all tell everything they know. Son, my name is Doc Richards. This is my niece, Renee. I'm glad to know you. And you too, Miss Renee. Now, I'm Lucky Jenk. Uh, say, son, do you mind if we join you? No, no, I'm glad to glad have you. Won't you sit down, Miss Renee? Thank you. I was feeling pretty lonely myself. Lonely? Well, I can't say that I blame you, son. You know, uh, these hotel lobbies were designed for boredom. Mm -hmm. I know. I've traveled more miles than I have pills. Oh, now I remember. I saw your name on the wagon outside. Yeah, sure. A sluggardly means of travel. Uh, say, son, you look like an intelligent young man. Uh, what line are you in? Well, I'm a cowhand. I spend most of my time on a ranch west of here. We've just come back from selling a big herd of cattle. We? Yes, hop along Casty. That's my boss. In mm. California, another cowhand. They went to bed, but I wasn't sleepy. I'm glad of it now. Well, you are sure glad of it too, son. Uh, say, tell me, do you like your work? Sure do, Mr. Richards. Oh, <laughs> just call me Doc. All right, Doc. Yes, it's a good life, riding the range, and the men are all swell, especially Hoppy. But, well, we did have a little trouble today. Oh, is that so? Well, now, perhaps it leaves your mind to tell us about it, huh? This was an important drive because we were bringing in the combined herds of the Cattle Association. I was dusty and hot and let some of the cattle get away. Hoppy got pretty sore at me and... Lucky had me worried. He owed Blaney money and the kid wasn't thinking right. Hey, we are. There we are. Now, let's drink up and feel nature spread its glowing warmth through our veins, huh? Well, it's getting late and I'm tired. Good night, Lucky. Well, will I see you in the morning? Oh, yes, of course you will. I I'll take care of that, son. Uh, you run along then, Renee. I'll uh, call you in time for breakfast, dear. Good night, Miss Renee. Yeah, this is a nice, quiet place, huh? Yes, it is. This is the time I like. When the souls of men can commune and the mind is relaxed into the dark void of the true belief. This is just what I needed. Yes, old Doc Richards' greatest remedy. I feel better already. This tea really clears your head. California. pronounce you man and wife. California, wake up. Sweetheart. What are you doing? Uh, excuse me. You ain't the bride. What are you talking about? A rich widow. I just married her. Now she's gone off for that five dollar ring I gave her. Will you stop that yapping and listen to me? Lucky came in sometime during the night and apparently waited line, went back to sleep, then went out again. Maybe he's downstairs having breakfast. I hope you're right because something else is missing. What's missing? The money. The, the money? Yeah, the money. That ain't possible, Hoppy. Well, well, nevertheless, it's true. <laughs> Morning. Morning. You seen the young fellow that came in with us last night? Nope, ain't seen nobody but Blaney and his boys, and they left here about an hour ago. Are you sure the boy wasn't with him? I just told you I didn't see him. If you think he's with him, you can find out for yourself. It was riding east. I bet you kill a lot of people with kindness. Hoppy! Hoppy! What is it? Lucky's horse is gone. I'll bet you knew Hattie's playing a joke on us. Well, I hope you're right, but with that money gone and his disappearance, it's not my idea of a joke. Good morning there, Cassidy. I'm Doc Richards. For your friend's description, I knew you had to be hop along Cassidy. That's right. Uh, Lucky was telling us all about you last night. Yes, you know, he thinks that you're 24 karat. I don't know, though. I, I'm afraid he'd be a little bit hurt about that bawling out you handed him yesterday. I'm surprised he'd discuss that with a stranger. By the way, do you know where he spent last night? Last night? Well, <laughs> in bed, I suppose. Well, at least that's where he said he was going when I left him here in the lobby last night. 
What time was that? Oh, about 11 o'clock, I guess. Uh, my niece, Renee, had just left, and Lucky and I had a cup of tea. Is anything wrong? No, I... Oh, I'm glad. I was just looking for the boy. We should be on our way home. I hope I see him again. So do I, miss. Yes, well, goodbye, Cassidy, and be sure and give our best regards to Lucky. He's a fine boy. Uh, come on, Renee. We must be getting along, dear. Come on. Bobby. What do we do? You get the horses while I pay the bill. Yeah, but Lucky and the money. Get the horses. Sure. There was only one trail that led eastward from the Boulder Inn, and we took it in search of Lucky. that the young man was wrong, but he was out here waiting for us. He wants protection. Isn't that so, son? You see? Why, what you're suggesting would be a calamity. How? Why, if you sent him back now, he'd be hanging at the end of a rope in an hour's time. Yes, there's only one solution to this problem. The young man's got to travel with us. He'd be perfectly safe in the back of the wagon, and so will the money. But that is... Now, Renee, please, I know how to handle this. What brings you so far away from that ranch of yours? Hoppy was due home yesterday, but when he didn't arrive, we figured he'd probably stopped here. So the boys and I thought we'd ride down and meet him. Kind of surprise him. <laughs> It'll be a surprise, all right. <laughs> that's right. Where is he? Well, that's kind of hard to say. He was here. Now he ain't. You sound mysterious, Jeb. What's up? Well, that's hard to say, too. One of Cassidy's men disappeared, and then he and the other fella rode out of here like bats out of purgatory. Then we should have passed him on the trail, if he was heading home. Which he wasn't. He was riding due east. Due east? That's, That's certainly the, the wrong direction. There's something uh, wrong. Wait a minute. Let's not jump to any hot-headed conclusions. We all know and trust Hoppy. For my money, there's nothing to worry about. And for my money, there is. And your money's in the same bag. Where's he going with it? Are you inferring that Hoppy's double-crossed us? He may be doing the inferring, but I'm doing the finding out. Are you with us, Randall? I never thought I'd live to see the day I'd be gunning for Hopalong Cassidy. Let's go. We rode eastward for hours, and then we caught sight of Blaney and his men. But Lucky wasn't with them. I figure Casty got around 25,000 for those combined herds. And that kind of money's worth taking a chance for. Go around the other side and keep me covered. Yeah. Put that fire out, Bill. Come on, let's get after Casty. He's the one we want. Well, you won't have far to go, Blaney. What is this? Where's Lucky? How should I know? Well, he's disappeared, and so is a lot of money I was transporting. Well, now, ain't that too bad. I didn't think the kid was that smart. Well, he's not smart in that way, but somebody else is, and that could be you, Blaney. I know the boy owes you money, and it's just possible you talked him into a robbery and a ride in the hills. Sure, he owes me money. He owes me a couple of hundred, but I ain't cutting his heart out to get it. Look, Cassidy, I'm telling you, I don't know where Lucky is or the money. All right, Blaney. Come on, men. Randall. 
Randall's my name. I'm looking for a fellow named Hopalong Cassidy. He should be riding with two other men. Sure, I know Cassidy, and I just saw him. Which way did they go? I think they headed toward Mason. What are you after him for? There's been a little trouble. Well, he's sure running away from it. your way home, didn't you? Hello, boys. I've been expecting you. No, we didn't lose our way, but I did lose something else. Could it be our money? That's right. But I wasn't thinking on coming back until I found it. We were right. That's Who ever heard story? of losing that, All that money? Hoppy, let's hear your story. Well, there isn't much, and what there is isn't very convincing. Money just disappeared to Boulder Inn when I was sleeping. Do you expect us to believe that? Well, I hoped you would. Look, Hoppy, you know where your friends and want to believe you. That story's no good. If the money disappeared, you ought to be chasing whoever took it, instead of running away. Well, I'm on his trail now. Who is it? That I don't know. We're not here to listen to riddles. Hoppy means we don't know the man's name. He travels around with a big gang and has a wooden leg, and one ear, and no hair, and... Uh, but he just disappeared. Speaking of things disappearing, where is Lucky? Well, I'm trying to find out, too. We've heard enough of this. How about taking these two in? That's my cinemas. Let's go. Let's get our money first. Just a minute, gentlemen. Your money is not here. I didn't steal it, but I'll get it back. If you hadn't pulled that gun on us, I might believe that. Well, someday I'll be happy to apologize. But speaking of guns, right now we'll have to take yours. Well, lucky maybe you ain't a bandit, but you're sure to make him one out of me. search for Lucky. Nobody tried to cross them badlands. Uh, maybe they hold up someplace. Then let's find them later. Right now, I need some water and something to eat. It's not a bad idea. saw them before. I don't know them. I do. They are my enemies. I want you to take this gun and kill them. No. Shut up. 
All right. Come along, sir. Lucky. He shot at us. My suspicions about that phony doctor are beginning to add up. Stay here and attract his attention. Oh, wait a minute, Hoppy. Lucky's a darn good shot. He ain't gonna keep missing. I know that. Stay here. Maybe I can stop him before he shoots again. He was out of his head. I had to do something. Give me that water. <laughs> when Lucky told us that he didn't remember anything after drinking the tea, I began to put two and two together. He had been hypnotized. You two wait out here. I'm going in the back way. Well, he's certainly taking his time. Bring him inside when he gets back. What? Well, what are you doing here? Oh, it's, uh, it's you, Doc. Well, yes, was I... Uh... I ran into some trouble over in the hills. I needed help and saw this shack. I came in the back way. I didn't know who I might find here. You say there was some trouble? Yes, it was lucky. You know, I've been looking for him. He suddenly came upon us in the hills and tried to kill me. But, well, I got him first. I guess he was loco. Ah, what a tragedy. Well, life is full of such things sometimes. And I sympathize with you. I'll brew you a cup of tea. No, thanks, Doc. I think I'll let you drink it. Me? Yes, you. I've been waiting for you to offer me some of that stuff. I wouldn't drink it and neither would you, but I've not controlled it. Why, why, what do you know about Lucky? I know Lucky isn't dead, as I led you to believe. It was a pretty clever trick, Doc. You got the boy a drug you gave him, got him to steal the money, then sent him out to kill me. Nobody'd ever suspected you of having the money, and the boy'd never come out of these hills alive. Put that down, or I'll kill you. Renee. Where's Hoppy? Inside. Put your guns away, Randall. There's your gold, and Doc's got a little explaining he wants to do. And that's how it happened. I'm just grateful that Mr. Cassidy was able to stop Lucky in time. That's a lie. You're in this just as deep as I am. I'm afraid not, Doc. I'm going to see that this girl is completely cleared. That satisfies me, Hoppy. And we all owe you a deep apology. Oh, forget it, Randall. Well, you might as well get him outside. Lucky, you take care, Miss Richards. Sure, Hoppy. <laughs> we sure get a ride for our money. Bye.